Um, my name's Harriet Whaley Cohen and I'm thrilled to be doing the weekly Club Soda webinar, the, your, your Sunday Night Live, um, to talk and inspire, empower you, um, to heal your relationship with your body. Um, this is a really big topic, right? Uh, so let me just fill you in a little bit on who the hell I am. Hi, you see who the hell I am, um, why I come to be giving this webinar, a little bit about my own relationship with my body, so you get where I'm coming from, right? The first thing that I want to tell you is that I last had a drink on the 30th of September 2002, which means that I've been sober for... Um, Gosh, 15 years, <laughs> over 15 years. I'll be 16 years sober at the beginning of October this year. So do I know what it's like to need to change my drinking, to stop and to change radically and to sustain it? Yes, I do. And to get through all kinds of difficult life things. I know what that is all about. Um, and healing my relationship with my body has been a really big part of that. Um, so I'm really, really excited to bring bring some of that to you and some of the tools. Now, so that's just a little bit about me personally. Other things for you to know about me personally, I'm a mum, I'm divorced, I've got a puppy. Um, yeah. And I love being sober. I genuinely love being sober. I love a conscious lifestyle. One where I face life fully head on. Um, where I'm not <clears throat> trying to get away from how I feel or what's going on in my life. I like to deal with life head on. And that's part of um, not drinking or not drinking so much. That's a really big part of it. So in terms of um, professionally, who the hell am I? Um, I'm a double certified coach. I'm certified in health and well-being. I'm also certified in women's leadership. Um, and that is very much, all of that and what I coach um, is very much around dropping disempowering patterns of behavior um, <clears throat> and showing people how to be in complete partnership with themselves in every area of life. And I do a huge amount of public speaking. I give a lot of workshops, a lot of talks in the corporate sector, the personal development sector. I also do a lot of stuff online. I know there's some, some of the Club Soda members are in my private group here on Facebook, which is totally free. I'll let you know what that's called at the end. I'm not gonna let you know now. You've gotta keep watching, right? No plugs till the end, right? Um, so in my coaching, in my speaking, in my private mentoring, right? Because I also voluntarily have been mentoring young women with drug and alcohol problems for over 14 years now. Um, I show people how to get on their own side, how to know themselves, how to honor themselves, how to get into a conscious, deeply loving, deeply content space. It's all about getting into a space where you're really comfortable with who you are on every single level and where you take care of yourself, you love yourself, right? Uh, for me, my journey of um, sobriety has been one from destruction to love, one from ego to heart, one where it's been about traveling from, um, you know, not, not liking myself, feeling generally in a crappy space about everything and therefore being in a very destructive space um, to one where just really honoring myself, loving myself, taking care of myself and no matter what's going on in my life, not behaving in a way that hurts me or anyone else is absolutely, that's like central to, to my way of living and that means being emotionally intelligent, right? Which, woo, I know, scary term. Um, but I'm fortunate enough to have learned enough about emotional sobriety and emotional intelligence and, and responding to my emotions in a way that don't hurt me um, or anyone else um, to be able to give talks and workshops on that. And I, I have also given a lot of talks and workshops and even run retreats on body love and body confidence. And I know that is the specific topic here tonight. So that's what we're going to be focusing on tonight. Um, if you've got questions, um, please fire them up. If you've got comments, just comment away and I will do my best to answer them as things comes along. Um, I've got a brief agenda that I've written on this handy card and I'll stick to that. But I also want to be able to respond to whatever you really need tonight. OK, so if you've logged on thinking I really need to know this thing, um, please, you know, fire away or tag me in the comments so that I can answer afterwards, okay? Um, I'm more than happy to share whatever wisdom I've got. So 
as I said, you know, my relationship with my body was not a loving one, was not a healthy one. It was one full of shame where I didn't feel like my body looked right. Um, I didn't feel like my hair looked right. I didn't have that like long silky hair that the other girls with could, could, could play with on the school bus when I was a kid. I've got like crazy thick curly hair that doesn't plait and doesn't do swishy ponytails. And I was just like, even as a young child, I was like, there's something wrong with me. I'm not good enough. My body is not good enough. There was lots of other things about me that I thought wasn't quite good enough either, but certainly I felt that about my body. And as I was a young woman turning towards, um, hi everybody who's saying hello, it's so lovely. Hello, 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 Mwah. and thrilled to have you here. Um, as I was a young woman turning from, you know, being a, a child to being a teenager to being a woman, you know, your body changes. And the thing is, is that at that time there was no social media, there was no internet. It was all just magazines and all my friends and everyone, we were reading all these teenage magazines and the supermodels had just hit, which is kind of showing you my age a little bit, right? I'm early forties. Um, the supermodels were everywhere and about a year later that Naomi and Cindy and like all those other, you know, Christy Turlington hit, Kate Moss hit. Right? She was everywhere. She was on the front cover of every single magazine and she looked like a child. She had no curves. She had no meat on her body whatsoever. Um, and it was very much the time of, you know, heroin chic, right? Um, and I remember at that time being in Topshop in Oxford Circus with a really good girlfriend of mine. I guess we were around 17, 18 years old, trying on these clothes, these dresses that were designed for you know, ch ch children with no curves or women with nothing on their bodies who were super, super skinny. And we are not big in any way. We were probably like a size eight or a size 10, but with curves. And we were trying these things on and they just didn't look right. And we couldn't work out why we didn't look like the girls in the magazines. And I remember crying, you know, crying in Topshop and Oxford Circus because I thought there was something wrong with my body. And from that point, you know, I did not have a loving relationship. I was like, my body doesn't look right, therefore I'm not acceptable, I'm not lovable, there's something wrong with me. And um, the, the result of that was getting into relationships that reinforced that, hanging out in crowds of people where um, it reinforced it, it was all very looks-based rather than character-based. Um, it was all very, um, you know, capitalist and, you know, have you got the right car? Have you got the right dress? Have you got the right body? Nobody was asking if you were a decent person. And I really felt that my entire worth was dependent on the way that my body looked. And I wasn't very happy with the way that my body looked because it didn't look like the girls in the magazine. And I went for that and for many other reasons that I'm not going to go into now. I went on a big self-destruct, you know, between the teenage years and my mid-twenties. Um, and I drank and took other things to complete oblivion, almost to the point of death. And I treated my body like such shit. I didn't feed it well, I didn't love it. I told, constantly looked in the mirror and said things to myself that were cruel and horrible and abusive. And you would certainly never want to say them to another human being. And here's the thing, did my body feel loved? Did my body feel respected? You know, it wasn't being nurtured, it wasn't being nourished, you know, and, and it's not surprising, is it, that my body and I had fallen out big time. Um, and there were other areas of my life that weren't right as well, you know, um, in the how I was showing up in my relationships because I didn't feel good enough. I was allowing other people to treat me like crap as well. Um, and because I was drinking so much and getting out of it so much, what I was bringing forth into the world wasn't great either. Um, so I was, you know, treating myself like crap, allowing other people to treat me like crap, bringing forth crap into the world. I felt like crap, right? It's not difficult. Um, and a big part of my journey in terms of healing my relationship with myself has been to do the absolute opposite of that. And instead of treating myself like crap, and treating my body like crap, has been to treat myself with the utmost love, respect, dignity and honouring love, respect, dignity and honouring, to smash the shame, to forgive myself, very importantly, for everything that I put myself through and to stop doing it, to show myself. This is an action speak louder than words situation, right? And of course, I've done a lot of work around relationships and what I bring forth into the world as well. But I really want to talk about this body piece because it's so important. 
Um, so <clears throat> I guess, you know, why, why would you want to heal your relationship with your body? Well, your body is the one thing that you've got that no one else has got that is the thing that's carrying you about. It's the thing that's enabling you to do everything. It's an integral part of who you are. And when you can heal your relationship with your body, magical things will happen. And the big thing here is that this is about self-trust. This is about how much you trust yourself. And if you imagine having a relationship with somebody else, let's imagine your best friend, right? And you've trashed them. You've treated them like shit. You've fed them shit. You've told them that they're rubbish. You've told them that they don't look right. You've plied them with alcohol to oblivion when they felt sad, angry, miserable, lonely. No matter what they felt, you've shoved alcohol and junk food down their neck, right? You're not gonna be able to repair that relationship by just going, oh, I'm so sorry, give us a hug. It's not gonna work like that. The repairing of the relationship of your body is not that different from the repairing of a relationship with another human being that you've treated really badly. This is gonna be about the actions that you show and those actions that you show on a really consistent basis. Um, you know, if you, um, re relationships with your body are a bit like romantic relationships, you know, a romantic relationship doesn't work if you're still banging your ex three times a week, right? I hope that's not too naughty to say on this webinar. And it's the same thing. If you're trying to repair from a destructive to a loving relationship, if you're still destructive half the time or 90% of the time, your body's not going to trust you. That relationship is not going to be repaired. This is about like dropping into a space of deep and utter love and contentment and trust. Okay, you've got to get your body to trust you and you've got to show your body that you're trustworthy. Hmm. So how do we go about rebuilding that trust? Um, well, this is, it is kind of about words, but it's also <clears throat> about actions. I'm just gonna grab some water, hang on. Um, I'm just gonna hold the water now so I don't need to keep dipping down. In terms of the actions that you take, right, this is because why is this an actions-based thing? I often say that you cannot think your way to a new way of feeling and acting towards yourself. You can't just stand there saying, I am lovable, I am beautiful, I deserve to be honoured, because if your actions don't match up, in the back of your head there's going to be this voice going, well, what, a load of, what a load of bullshit, right? Because it's not, your actions don't match up. You can, however, act your way to a new way of thinking and feeling about yourself. You act first and the thinkings and the feelings follow and you act and then the trust comes. You've got to show yourself that you're trustworthy. You've got to show yourself that you are deserving. You've got to show yourself that you're worth respect, that you're worth love, yeah? So even if you don't feel like it, put in the action and your thinking and feeling will follow. I promise this is true. I've done this with hundreds of clients, with many women that I've mentored, and it really works. It absolutely works. Um, the thing with mantras, they do work, but they, they have to be honest mantras, right? So a mantra of, I am lovable and I am beautiful, <clears throat> will only work if you believe those things. If you don't believe those things, you need to have an honest mantra like, I'm working on getting to a place of thinking that I'm lovable, or, I'm working on believing that I'm beautiful. And then it'll be an honest mantra. Okay, so ma I know for a lot of people mantras do work, um, but they do need to be honest so that you don't have that little voice going, eh, don't believe this, there were a load of rubbish, why are we even doing this, right? So this is about actions. And I wanna talk to you about what you put on your body and what you put in your body. Okay, because these are really, really important. So let's talk about what you put on your body first. Um, and here we're talking clothes, we're also talking products, and we're also talking um, touch, right? Because that's something that you put on your body. Um, so with clothes, right, it, it's no good. If you imagine that you were in charge of a small child and you were saying to them, hey, you know, I think you're awesome, doing the mantra thing, yet you were 
putting, putting them in horrible old clothes that didn't really fit well, that definitely hadn't been ironed, that weren't in great condition, and just going, you look, I know I'm telling you that you're great, but just, just put this old, this old crap on. That child is gonna go, what's going on? What's going on? And that's the same for you. If you're dressing your body in weird, crappy old clothes, how are you gonna to expect to feel amazing about yourself? The things that you put on your body, your clothes, including your underwear, it's the first thing you put on every day and it's you showing yourself how you feel about yourself. Um, so put on nice things. Upgrade what you're wearing. You wear those scarves, iron your shirts, put something nice on just for the sake of it. Show your body that you respect it and that you honour it. And when you've got a few spare pennies, you know, maybe treat yourself to something nice so that you have got more lovely things to put on. And I know not everyone has spare money. And sometimes it's just about, you know, putting on the nicer things that you've got in your cupboard. It might be about dressing up the things that you've got and just getting the, those that jewellery, accessories, whatever it is, getting it out. Or as I said before, doing something like ironing it. That can make a really big difference as well and just shows your body that you respect it and helps you to build trust so you put that on every day and your body's like oh this is nice I like this yeah and the same with products um, if you're putting super cheap products um, from the value section of the supermarket on your body and um, that are full of chemicals how's that gonna feel does that feel like respect and love and honouring? Probably not. Now again, I understand that everybody has financial constraints, but at the same time, when you start running out of your products, just think, what? how could I show my body through the product that I'm using that I love and respect it? How can I build that relationship in that way? Now, if you have um, ethical beliefs, along the lines of, you know, you're against animal testing or environmental beliefs, all that kind of thing, you can bring those in and that's another way of honouring your body, your soul and going, you know what, I don't, it really distresses me when a company um, is trashing the environment or it really distresses me when a company tests on animals. So I'm going to honour my body by not putting my money in that direction and by only using things that are genuinely aligned with who I am. So that's, that's clothes and products. Um, the next thing to talk about is touch. Now, you can build an amazing relationship with your body by having conscious awareness towards it um, and with it. Be with your body. Right? Be with your body, be on the same side as your body and show gratitude for your body. So you can use words and touch at the same time to really make friends with your body. And the simplest way to do this is self-massage. Um, when you're putting body lotion on or you could do this at night before you go to bed and it'll help you sleep well. And I know for a lot of you, sleep is an issue, right? Um, especially if you used to drink yourself to oblivion and now you're having trouble sleeping, right? Um, massage is a great way to help you get to sleep and to sleep better with a more relaxed body. Massage your body and while you're doing it, be fully present with each body part and think about what that body part has done for you that day and throughout your entire life. And whilst you're massaging that part of your body, say hello, look at it with your eyes, be consciously present with it and say thank you. So if you were massaging your hand, for example, if I was doing it tonight, I might say thank you for all the food that you've chopped, thank you for enabling me to hold my children and my dog and show them love, thank you for the writing that you've done today, thank you for the connections that you've enabled me to have through social media on my phone and scrolling with my thumb. <laughs> Thank you for the hugs that you've helped me to have with my family. Thank you for driving me to see my family. Um, thank you for helping me to be of service while I was with my family by helping to serve with the food. There are lots of different ways that I could thank just that hand. And you know what? My feet have carried me about all day and they haven't complained once. So have my legs. 
they've they've been really good to me today um and my tummy oh my goodness it's digested all that food i've put in it it's grown my amazing children and yes it's not the same you know shape it was but it's grown these incredible humans um and there's so many ways that you can thank your body and you know something else to think about when you're doing this conscious awareness massage talk and touch with your body is to imagine that you're about to lose that body part and just think about how much you'd love it and how much you'd want it and how much you wouldn't want to lose it um you know very recently i had to have some biopsies um and i knew um because the doctors said they were very sure that there was not going to be anything nasty there and i wasn't looking at having huge chunks of my body cut out but whilst there was still this this teeny element of doubt I have never loved that body part of mine more or wanted it and respected it and felt grateful for it and like just really loved it the way that I did when I thought that there was a small chance I might be about to lose it, right? I want you to sit with that idea, that idea, like be grateful for what it does. Stop all this not grateful because of how it doesn't look, yeah? This is about going from shame and disrespect to gratitude and appreciation, um it's very very powerful in terms of healing your relationship with your body um and it's amazing how other people will start to respond differently as well um i i used to my tummy that was my weak spot where i was always like oh i don't know if i like my tummy especially after babies and like oh lumpy and i've had c-sections all this kind of stuff and um I started doing the massage thing. I was testing it out before I gave it to clients, right? I always test stuff out. And also any tools that I share with people, it's always because I'm already using them. I, I, I talk my walk, I don't do it the other way around. Like I tell you stuff that I'm already doing that I know works. Um, and so I did this massage thing and I was massaging my tummy and showing it gratitude and love and appreciation. And I didn't tell anyone I was doing it and I didn't do it in front of anyone. And after only a few short days, my younger son came rushing into the bathroom one morning and started kissing my tummy. He was probably about five at the time and he was like, mummy, I love your tummy so much. It, you grew me in there and it was my first home and it's the most special part of your body ever. It was like this magical, beautiful moment. Um, yeah. Yeah, so you know, things shift. Other people notice these imperceptible shifts in ourselves. The way that you walk, the way that you carry yourself is completely different when you have a healed relationship with your body. Um, I know with the latest Dove Global Survey, you know, they showed um, when they looked at people, women's relationships with their body, that women who don't have a good relationship with their body um, will not speak up for themselves at work, will not push themselves forward for a promotion, won't stand up for themselves in their relationships. Like it's having a massive impact on our futures, our, our financials, our health, happiness, everything. Your relationship with your body is absolutely vital. So do do this gratitude and appreciation work. Um, and see how that shifts things for you. Shift away from appearance, away from shame, away from not good enough, and get into this space of appreciation, right? That's gonna help, right? The, the clothes, the touch, the being present, the kind words. Okay, now let's talk about what you put in your body. And oh, some of you might be sniggering right now and going, oh, does she mean, you know, in a kinky way? Actually, yes, I do a little bit. If you are having intimate, intimate times with other people that are not respectful and honoring, how can you expect to feel good about your body? How can you expect your body to trust you if you're allowing other people to do that? Think about all your intimate con um, encounters should be honoring and beautiful and respectful. Um, it'll make a big difference to healing your relationship with your body. You know, if you think about any other person on the planet, but think about someone you love and imagine them having intimate encounters that were not respectful, beautiful and honouring. Like, would you expect their body to like them and feel trusting of them? Hell no. You wouldn't. And you'd be kind of worried for them, wouldn't you? So put yourself in that category as well. You deserve it. Let's talk a little bit about food because... That's the main thing that you put in your body, isn't it? Food and water. Now, I do get that when you first change your drinking, cleaning up your diet is not number one priority, right? Number one priority is just stick to those drinking goals and do what 
whatever it takes. Yeah, but as, as time ticks on, you might be thinking about, well, what's the next thing? What is the next thing that you can deal with? What is the next thing that you can do to heal your relationship with yourself and an extra layer of recovery from what you've put yourself through and all the destruction? And that's to look after your body as well as you can through hydrating it properly and through putting really good nutrition into it. Make sure that you're drinking plenty of water. Um, and for you, that might be one litre or three or four litres a day. You will know what the right thing is. For most people, it's about two litres a day. Um, it helps you to think more clearly. It keeps those toxins flushed out. It keeps your energy levels up. It helps your skin to glow, which is a nice added bonus. Um, and you only have to be about 5% dehydrated to not be able to think clearly by as much as 30%. So in order to be mentally sharp and make good decisions, including sticking to your drinking goals, stay fully hydrated, right? Um, if you wanna know how to do that, just have a big glass of water when you wake up in the morning and the next time you go to the bathroom, because you will need to go to the bathroom, right? Have another big glass of water. And then at some point you'll need to go to the bathroom again, have another glass of water, go in that drink, pee, drink, pee cycle all day long, right? And all will be well. That's the simplest way to do it. Some people like carrying around bottles of water, which they fill up, whatever works for you, right? Find a system that works. And if you don't have one, try the drink, pee, drink, pee thing. Let's talk about food, right? Because again, think about that little child. If you told that, that, little, that little person that you were in charge of that you really loved them and respected them and that you were going to take care of them now and you fed them total crap, would they feel loved? No. If you do that to your body, your body will not feel loved and respected. Feed it the best food that you can. And by that, I mean clean food, clean, lots of green vegetables, lots of vegetables, good fruits, you know, whole grains, good quality protein. Um, and if that means that you eat meat, get the best that you can afford that's had a healthy, happy life, right? Um, if you're not, if you don't eat meat, then whatever, you know, good quality proteins, lentils and beans and all that kind of thing. Eat a really good diet. Now, the, the one that I like, and you know, I've done a year long training in health and well-being, so I do know what I'm talking about when it comes to nutrition. Um, the, but the school of thought that I like the best, this is just my personal opinion, okay, um, is one by a doctor called Dr. Joel Furman. Um, and his approach is about nutrient density. And he basically has scored every single food that there is according to how much bang you get for your buck. So for every kilo, how much nutrient, how many nutrients are packed into it. And when you, that's how I like to eat. I just like to put as much as many nutrients as possible on my plate in order to feed and honor my body. And then it runs really well and I'm full of energy and I'm not craving stuff, you know? Um, so if you, if you just Google Dr. Joel Furman and nutrient density, you'll get all that information. Um, I do like the approach of some of the other functional medicine doctors that are out there. Um, Mark Hyman, Frank Lipman, people like that. They're properly trained medical doctors who take the approach that medicine is sick care and a good diet and lifestyle is health care, right? Um, and it's totally the case that how well your body runs depends on the quality of the fuel that you put in it. So put really good quality fuel into your body. Eat loads of vegetables, drink green smoothies like I do. Um, drink loads of water, just be super duper kind to your body. Um, now, can I ask for a favor, um, you see, or anyone else who's watching, can you just type and let me know where I am time-wise? Because I don't have a clock in here, um, and I don't know how much longer I've got to go. So I'd really love to know um, how much longer I've got to go. So please do let me know. I'm not even sure if my phone is working um, to come up with the comments, because nothing's come up for ages. So either you will think what I'm saying is rubbish, or loads of the comments aren't showing for me. So if someone could comment, I'd really appreciate that. And just let me know how much time I've got left. Now, one of the things that um, somebody commented on when I asked you earlier, what would you like to know about in terms of healing your relationship with your body was sugar and the sugar menace. And, you know, sugar is highly addictive. It has no nutritional value, right? 
there's nothing in it that we need nutritionally. But here's the thing, right? It's not as bad for you as drinking. It really isn't. For a short period of time, if you need to lean on sugar a bit to get you through, it's better than having a drink, right? And it might be that further down the line, you need to deal with the sugar thing. So if you're right at the beginning of your journey and you're struggling with your drinking goals, just focus on those, right? When you're a little bit more confident with that, then it's time to tackle perhaps some of the food issues. Um, and um, for me, you know, I, I gave up everything, all the drink, all the other substances. Um, thanks, Pamela, saying it's 7.32. I'm supposed to be wrapping up soon, blimey. So I'll, I'll just cover off the questions that people asked me um, and then I will um, come back. Um, I'll, I'll just wrap up. So I'm going to do another five minutes or so, okay? Um, thanks, Nicola. Really appreciate you commenting and saying where we are time-wise. Um, so the sugar thing, what was I saying? I was saying, look, tackle your drinking goals first, then you can tackle food issues. Um, I always say, keep the ritual, change the substance. Keep the ritual and change the substance. And by that, I mean, don't have really crappy, poor quality chocolate. Chocolate um, and sugary things are a bit like sex. They can be anywhere from a spiritual experience to a criminal offence. A criminal offence is like you're going through the petrol station or you've just had a crappy day at work and you just grab whatever cheap chocolate, probably, you know, some well-known brand that's full of milk um, and you wolf it and you didn't even taste it. It's gone and you're like, oh, the whole thing is gone, right? You do, it's not made anything better. You weren't present with it, you didn't even really enjoy it, and you're like, oh, why did I do that? And you give yourself a hard time, right? That's the criminal offence. The spiritual experience is when you have really good quality treats. Um, it could be like really amazing, raw, sugar-free chocolate. It could be a really good quality dark chocolate. It could just be a little bit of something that you really love. And you sit down with it and you have a cup of tea, um, and you, um, and you savour it and you have a little bit and you let it melt in your mouth and you enjoy every single taste bud firing and you close your eyes and your whole body is alive with the gorgeousness of the treat that you're having. That is a spiritual experience, okay? Um, yeah. When it com comes, comes to, to things like that, go for that small treat. Now, if you find that you can't just have one, if you can't just have a little bit, you might need to think about going sugar free. I've actually been sugar free for the last two and a half years um, and very, very proud of that. Um, and um, the thing is that I do have tiny bits every now and then, but I've also, um, but only when it's unbelievably good quality, right? When it's very rare and appropriate. So I'm talking maybe twice a year, I might have like the tiniest truffle or something like that. I'm not talking like, oh, every day it's rare, you know, a special treat. Um, <clears throat> and I think it, it's like all of these things. It's about getting really deeply honest about why you're doing something. Are you doing it to run away from how you're feeling or are you doing it because it's genuinely a treat? What's your motive? And if you're doing it because you've literally switched rooms on the Titanic and you've gone from alcohol to sugar, then it's time to look at what's really going on underneath. And that will help you to stop. Yeah. So I hope that makes sense um, in terms of dealing with the sugar. Now, the last thing that I want to talk to, uh, talk, talk to, talk about. The last thing I want to talk about is this whole business of being in pain and your body not doing what you want it to do. And someone who commented on my thread earlier was asking about IBS and not feeling very happy with their body. Um, and I myself, as those of you who've been in the group a while and who've maybe got to know me on and off, I don't post all the time, but just from time to time will know that two and a half years ago, um, I was badly injured in a car crash and I was in horrific levels of pain for a number of months and two and a half years down the line, I'm still on medication. I still have pain the entire time in my head and my neck. Um, and it's very hard for the doctors to say when that will go or even if it will go. There's lots of ways in which my body cannot do anymore the things that it used to be able to do. <clears throat> I can't jump, I can't run, I can't go on roller coasters with my children, I can't do yoga, I can't play tennis, I can't swim, um, I can't go to the gym. 
There are so many things um, that I can't do, right? I'm constantly, every single thing that I do in my life, I'm like, is this gonna make my head and neck better or worse? I can't have late nights. I can't go out dancing. Um, I can't turn my head very easily. You know, I'm showing off because I did quite good left and right turns there, but it's not always like that. Some days, you know, that is the limit of my movement. And I've had to drop into this deep space of compassion with myself for what's going on and also make creating a life where I support what my body needs in order to function at its best my highest priority. I don't get too stressed, I don't get too tired, I reach out and ask for help, I get early nights, I'm ultra respectful of what my body needs. Um, and if you have dietary things that mean that when you eat X, Y, Z, you get <clears throat> digestive problems. If you have injuries like I do, that means that if you do A, B, C, you exac exacerbate it and you're in a lot of pain, stop doing that. Stop it. Stop hurting yourself. You wouldn't do that to someone else. If, you're, if you're, you know, your best mate was coming around and you knew, knew they were super sensitive to onions or they got a bad tummy, you're not going to be giving them onion soup, are they? Yet why do we do this to ourselves? The bottom line is this. Have compassion for yourself. This is a journey from destruction and hatred and a lack of consciousness to love, to awareness, to honouring, to gratitude, to compassion. If I can do it, anyone can do it. You know, if I can get through physical scares like I've had, where I just found out earlier this week I'm going to have to have some surgery, um, although minor you know if I can still love my body through that if I can love my body through it not looking the way I want to if I can love my body through a lot of the trauma it's been through and rebuild that self-trust so can you this is about consistent action go and show yourself that you love and respect yourself and I promise you that you will end up feeling loved and respected and you will heal your body don't expect it to happen overnight but I promise you'll get there if you keep going at it Okay, um, so I think I've overrun, but never mind. I've really enjoyed doing this. I'd love to know what you got out of this, what you enjoyed. If you want to stay in touch with me, I have a private group here on Facebook, which is all about how to get into a better relationship with yourself. Imaginatively, it's called Harriet's Inner Circle. Um, all of you are welcome. I put out videos and all kinds of stuff. You're more than welcome to join that. Um, and you can look me up on social media as well. I'm at Harriet underscore WC. Um, so that's me. Um, anything you wanna ask me, please pop it in the comments and I will do my best to answer it. Sending you all lots of love. Have an amazing evening and thanks again for listening.